Hey there viewers and welcome to our DIY Auto Channel. Today we have my 90 LeSabre and it needs front brakes. So I already did the other side but I figured I'd bring you along here for the driver's side so you can see how it's done. Some of the tools we're going to use today are a torque wrench, impact, die grinder, a couple of various sockets. I'm going to use some fluid film, anti-seize, and uh, just you know a couple basic hand tools that you have around your shop. All right, so first things first, we've uh, braced and supported the vehicle, just used regular jack and stands. And the uh, next step is we're gonna take the wheel off and uh, that takes a 22 millimeter, I think, 21. And we're gonna be extra careful because I spent a lot of time repainting these wheels. And it pained me to chip them. So just as a safety precaution, you can probably see I've wrapped the socket with some electrical tape so that, you know, we don't chip anything, or at least try to avoid it. Okay, that step is complete. Here with a wiggle. I'm gonna go put this tire somewhere. So before I take these brakes apart, I always like to give it a, a visual inspection. I like to look at the rotor. Uh, the face of it looks like it's you know warm pretty nice um, the wear indicator here hopefully you guys can see that i'll move a little bit so I'm not in the way of the camera wear indicator is not hitting the disc um, i don't see any fluid leakage anywhere anything like that no excessive rust so uh, basically we're replacing the brakes on this car so that we um, so that we can put ceramics on it for a kind of a dusting issue um, just to keep the wheels a little bit cleaner so our next step is going to be at this point, we're going to loosen up these two bolts here that hold the caliper on. There's uh, one right here and one right here. And these are kind of weird in that they take a T50. So if you're doing one of these cars, make sure you have that tool uh, before you begin. So we're going to put our ratchet into lefty loosey mode. And break those loose. Oh boy, I gotta get an extension for this one. Hang on. I'm also going to take the brake line loose. I think it makes for a little better access. Oh boy. There we go. Perfect. So next up, we'll zip that 10 mil off. And for that, I'm just going to use my air ratchet. That guy's out. Just kind of set the bolt somewhere where we'll, where we'll lose it later. Get this guy out. And Sweet. Okay. Next step. I'm just gonna get in here with a screwdriver and retract that piston just a little bit. Let's this come off a little bit easier, so. Okay, I'm ready. Hopefully you guys kind of see what we have. I'm looking at my wear on my pads here. And, uh, I'm noticing the shim is separating from the uh, backing plate here. That's kind of interesting to see. But no taper on the pads, no front or back, anything like that. So it tells me my hardware is good. Um, and all of that other good stuff. So that's good. That's what we want to see. So our next step, I suppose, is kind of optional. I'm going to crack our bleeder loose. Work it a little bit. I suppose you could do this with the caliper still installed on the, on the vehicle, but my master cylinder is pretty full of fluid, so uh, I don't really want to push that piston back in with uh, with all the and have an overflow. So our next step is we're gonna take these pads out and uh, I can't really zoom you in anymore. Sorry, I'm filming this on a phone, but uh, I just grab my famous pry driver here. And uh, sometimes these rust in, these are 
these are loose so that's wonderful and uh, just kind of pull up on them a little bit there's that one and then the inside one there he is so what i'm going to do now my maybe move my work light here what i'm going to do now is i'm going to clean up this piston face i'm going to sand it with probably some 80 grit sandpaper and then i'm going to clean you know these flanges here up where everything kind of bolts i realize this doesn't you know bolt up to the knuckle or anything like that but just kind of degrease i'm going to clean this area right here where my uh, if, you, if you can see that get a little more light going uh, i'll clean this up real good just to get all the rust off it kind of keeps things from squeaking all right so i'm going to just use a paint stick with a little 80 grit and hopefully you can kind of see what we're doing here I'll try it like this In my opinion you should do this before you retract the piston back into the caliper so you don't tear up the little dust seal on it so hopefully you can kind of see what we're doing paint sticks nice and flat these are aluminum pistons i believe so just kind of chiseling off the old grease and all that sort of stuff it's looking good all right next just kind of prop that up there i don't know if you can see that bring you guys in a little closer and, uh, it is kind of hard to see sorry about that it's kind of a turd to film this that's why i've never done it before in all these years just have to kind of take my word for it so if i can get in here with a little die grinder or something uh, with a roll lock on it cookie wheel whatever you want to call it that, that actually cleans this stuff up a lot easier than doing it by hand. But considering we're doing the brake job here with the extreme DIY edition, I thought, well, if we don't have to use that tool, then so be it. So, time pays pretty good on this. It's 1.1 hours, and that doesn't include the R&R uh, &R of the rotor. So, and that's just to do the two front brakes. So. Um, doesn't include doing any grease on the bushings or anything like that. Doesn't include bleeding the brakes. So you're, you're actually paid, you know, in my opinion, pretty well to really to clean this stuff up. Okay, it's just a little grease in there. We'll clean that up later. So stay. A lot of times the brake clean kind of helps that piston seal kind of soften up a little bit when you push it in. It's not really a piston seal. A little dust boot, whatever you want to call it. Doodad. I'm trying not to shower this garbage all over the car. Try to keep things sort of nice. Get a rag. I'm trying to do this one handed. Stay. Sometimes they play nice with you and other times not so much. So hopefully you can kind of see um, how clean and shiny. I've got these down to nice bare metal. You know these calipers are 29 years old so they got a little bit of wear in them. They are original to the vehicle, but uh, as much as I drive this, it's good. I'm not gonna sit here and worry about a tiny little bit of wear. So there was no problems with the brakes uh, prior, just a little bit of uh, run out in discs, pedal pulsation when you, when you apply the brakes. So beyond that, everything was good. Obviously, I did extinguish the uh, heat in here. We're kind of doing this in the middle of winter time, so perfect day to do a brake job on a car. 
All right, next, as you can see the sliding pins on these. These are kind of a unique design, you know. I pull these guys out and then I'm gonna give them a thorough douching with brake clean and scotch Brite on the fasteners and all of that stuff, get them cleaned up. I usually do one at a time just in case they're different. Uh, rubber, you know, seals on this look like they're in fabulous shape, so we're not gonna do anything with those. We'll clean them out. Used to have a little brush we could run down in there. I don't know what happened to it. So we'll do it the old fashioned way with a rag and a can of brake clean. And then we'll lubricate these up with the purple Permatex and start putting this thing back together. All right, so the next thing that we're going to do is uh, we're going to clean the spot where this guy slides on on the knuckle. So we'll actually he slides in here. So I'm going to use uh, 50 grit Rolock three inch. Yeah, you could do it with sandpaper. I'm going to do it down here as well. Hopefully you can kind of see where that is. And then I'm also going to do you know the same surface here on the on the caliper. So two on here and. Uh, about six different little areas here on the knuckles. So um, what I'm gonna do first, just so that the, the caliper doesn't fall, is I'm gonna, I'm gonna polish this guy up real nice and then I'm gonna hang it with a zip tie and then I'm gonna do the knuckle last. And at that time I'll, I'll do the rotor and all that other good stuff. We're gonna put a new rotor on it. So should be pretty easy. You know, change the shape a bit or anything, but kind of cut through some of the rust there. So that looks pretty good. And then now you see why I unhooked that brake hose. Okay, doesn't have to be perfect. We just want to get the majority of the rust off. So the caliper is done except for being re-greased, which I'm going to do when I'm finished up with all this grinding. Next thing we're going to do. Get rid of the rotor. So we got to clean this hub face up. Uh, rotor sits, you know, here and here, so we need to get rid of all the rust. If we don't, um, we'll clean all this stuff up too. So I'm gonna get as much as I can. Um, I'm gonna use this 3M tool. I'll put a part number for it in the description of the video. But uh, what it does, it goes around these lug nuts, studs rather, lug nuts. And it does a really nice job, really gets in here well. You can use it to clean basically the whole thing. I, I probably will on this car, just you know, keep things simple. But uh, if you don't, it can cause our new rotor to wobble a little bit. Take some sandpaper or some emery cloth or something like that 
and uh, I just put it on my finger and that way I can get in and get that you know hub flange underneath those lugs cleaned up real good the brake rotor doesn't ride on it but it's nice to you know get as much of the rust out of there as you can and I think it just does a better quality brake job personally step is going to be to put some lube not a lot just a little coating on these sliding surfaces here anything I sanded not be corrosion day we'll do the same thing here with the caliper so it actually looks like it's in a pretty good position for you guys to see it. So I still got to do the two pins, but uh, I'm just going to put a little bit of lube here. I'm going to coat the face of the piston. Well, probably should wait with that until I push the piston back in. So we can go ahead and do that right now. Okay, so I'm just going to use an old uh, C clamp. Um, if you don't. Maybe save some time even put a brake pad in there, whatever. Uh, some of these pistons are phenolic. It's a fancy term for plastic. So you gotta be kind of careful with the C-clamp treatment. But uh, these being aluminum, I'm not too worried about it. So I am gonna open that bleeder. And uh, she's dripping. So we'll put our little cup under it. And we'll uh, gingerly put our caliper back in and continue our brake job. Brake fluid looks pretty clean. I flushed this probably, gosh, five years ago. It's been a little while. We'll probably do the flush on another day, another video. Okay, there we are. And close the bleeder. Not real tight, because I'll bleed it by gravity again here when I'm done, so. Uh, yeah, there's some chunks in the old brake fluid, but kind of how it goes. Okay, uh, get rid of this. on a little bit especially if the piston is steel 
kind of helps to keep it from rusting, keeps the noise down, things like that. So, okay, I am going to do earlier. I don't know if you can see that, but that kind of polished area where the pads ride, we are Get some high temp lube on that. I do not like the brush that comes with this, by the way. Usually I just use a little acid brush. So now I'm gonna do the pins and then uh, we'll put the new shoes in and pads rather, and this whole thing back together. Now we need the pads. Taking a look at our brake pads here, we want to make sure that the old ones are the same as the new. So let's dig in here. Let's see what we got. Okay, so looking at the outer pad can see shape is yeah they pretty much look the same so that's good on those and uh, let's take a gander here at the inside and those look the same little tabs line up hardware's the same so I don't know if you can kind of see they got the little spring on the inside and on the outside the you know two little ears there so um, look like they'll fit just great Okay, on the back of the pads, I kind of do the same thing. You really want to make sure your hands are, you know, clean. I put a little bit of grease. Kind of helps with noise a little bit. These are ceramic, so noise shouldn't be that much of a problem, but Better to be safe than sorry. So I'm not touching the pad material. And uh, we'll wipe the excess off when we're all finished up. So I'm just gonna set him there. I'm gonna do the same with this one. Do the tang too. I don't know if it helps or not. We'll do the outside. Okay. Next up, I'm gonna wipe my hands off and then uh, we'll put them back in the caliper. Just brought the caliper down. We're gonna, oops, that's a lot. Uh, you know what, I'm just gonna use my finger. Evenly distribute that in there like such. I cleaned this just off camera. Figured you've probably seen enough of the whole cleaning process thing. It's like seriously half the time it's just cleaning parts. So anyway, we're now ready to put the new pads in. So I guess I usually put the inner first if this thing would stay. Right. Put your hands on your pants. Oh yeah, sweet. Slides 
dude. There's another spot inside of here where it slides. Um, I suppose you should clean that up good too, but reality is uh, it's not gonna wedge against that really at all. So it actually looks fairly clean right now. It sure does. Might put just a smidge lubrication on that. Just a touch. Test fit again. Making sure I don't get any grease on any of our pad face. We made it. Okay. All right. Next thing to do is to slide the outside one in. This one can be a little tricky sometimes. Or it just goes together real easy and makes me a liar. So the caliper is done. I'm gonna wipe the excess little bits of grease off of it. Um, more than likely when I get it all put together, but everything's looking pretty good so far. Just kind of smush these guys out a bit. Perfect. Fluid film the hub face. Put a little anti seize on the lug nut studs. And it keeps everything happy. Optional, I suppose, depending on where you live. Okay, so one thing to keep in mind with the rotor is, uh, well, I'll just unbox this here a little bit for you, is I have already uh, taken it inside and I've cleaned it with soap and water. So there's a couple schools of thought on how to do that, but they usually got a, um, like an oily sort of residue on them. Some people say use bright cleaner, some people say, you know, it's got metal shavings, so you gotta use soap and water and all that stuff. I use soap and water. Um, I can hose it off when I'm all finished with it with brake cleaner too. I'm not really all that worried about it. So as long as it doesn't have any of that, you know, anti-rust coating or oil or whatever the stuff is on it. So um, this is all good. And like I said, I cleaned it up earlier, so I didn't have to do it out here. Make sure there's no bends and twists in your brake line. I start the top bolt, thread it in a couple of turns, and you can kind of use it as a pivot and bring your bring your bottom one into alignment. So I think my top one came out again. Nope, oh, it's gone. Okay. It's kind of Wipe our paw prints off that real quick. Oh, where, where, where are my tools? Where are the tools? Always oh, losing something. Let's run these in a little bit at a time. Everything slides good. Should be plenty of room. Um, you should never have to grind your pads down to get them to fit, you know, the ears or anything like that. Everything should fit really nice. Uh, here we're going OEM on the rotors and uh, 
I think Wagner, Wagner Power Stop on the pads. So everything fit nice. Um, I'm going to do a little bit of detail work on this, kind of get things back looking clean. And it's 38 foot pounds. This top guy is pretty awkward, but I think we can make it happen. Okay, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to just let gravity kind of help me out on the bleed situation. Kind of put a rag around that best I can so we can watch the brake fluid. I don't know if you can see that, but obviously I have more, so there's some bubbles coming out. I want to let her run for a little bit. Bleeding the brakes would be the proper thing when you're finished, but you know, that's for another day. We're just doing a pads and rotors here today. Okay. A different rag. Wipe things down. She's gingerly snug. Okay. Usually put a little grease on that. Work it in there a bit. Torqued. Just need to put this guy on. So, you know, that's not what I was. Maybe it is. Clean it first. And uh, get it with some fluid film. And the bolt actually still has anisees on it from about six years ago when I put struts on this car, so that's good. It's doing something, obviously. Let's put a schmidge on there. Thread that in by hand first. Threads are started so we don't ruin it. Get a ratchet. And I always like to give it the hand torque to factory spec. There we are. Okay, my give these a little toot for you know good measure, all that stuff. And that's basically it. So we'll put the tires on wheels on whatever you want to call them uh, we'll pump up the brakes make sure everything feels you know good and solid and it's not you know feeling any worse than it did before and then uh, we'll take it for a little toot around the block and then we're done with this brake job folks well there you have it brake job on a buick so if you liked what we did today uh, be sure to subscribe leave a comment in the box ring the bell all of that other good stuff that you already know how to do and join us next time thanks for watching